Planting seeds for food is as old as mankind and vital to human survival. Napoleon said, an army marches on its stomach. In America, Thanksgiving for a bountiful harvest is a national holiday. Abundant food from American farmers is part of our heritage. That's why a U.S. Supreme Court decision in 1980 should be ranked with Roe v. Wade and Brown v. Board of Education as legal decisions with profound impact on our way of life. The case is Diamond v. Chakrabarty. Mr. Chief Justice, and may it please the court, the question before the court in this case is whether a living organism is patentable subject matter under Section 101 of the present patent law. The court decided that, yes, you could patent life forms. There was no involvement by Congress, no involvement by uh, administrative agencies. It's all done by the court. And it was later that uh, the Supreme Court was faced with the question on seed specifically. But what it really means is this, that the holder of the patent has immense power over the seed and over the germplasm involved. When that was changed, it was the beginning of the end of the seed industry as we knew it. At the time of Diamond versus Chakrabarty, Monsanto was a chemical company morphing into a biotechnology company. Two years after the Supreme Court decision on patenting life forms, Monsanto scientists succeeded in modifying the genetics of a plant cell. By 1987, Monsanto was field testing genetically modified crops. In the 1990s, Monsanto began to push genetically modified crops into agriculture markets in the U.S. and around the world. Monsanto's dark history, its products, and its tactics make it one of the most despised companies in the world. Monsanto isn't the only big player in the genetically engineered seed trade. DuPont Pioneer, Switzerland Syngenta, and Bayer also sell GE seed. OCM got involved in this particular project because uh, that particular industry is far from being uh, competitive and uh, the farmer is uh, limited as to the selections of varieties of seed that's available to him and we think he's forced to pay too much as a result of, of the non-competitiveness of the marketplace. But it's Monsanto's ruthless rise to near total domination in the seed industry that concerns the farmer members of OCM. OCM, the Organization for Competitive Markets, is focused on fair competition in agricultural markets. It takes no position on genetically modified food. The issue isn't the seeds, it's the seeds' patented genetic traits that are the basis for fears of monopoly power over our food. The company that has the patent on the trait is the one that's in the driver's seat. Monsanto has genetically engineered crop seeds which are tolerant of the company's Roundup glyphosate herbicide, which kills weeds and any plant without so-called Roundup-ready genes. Monsanto's products are popular with American farmers, but the company's business practices are not. The partnership that we have with other entities, seed entities, are entirely different than we have with Monsanto. There's an arrogance about those folks that uh, they feel like that whatever they, their edicts from on high they, and they come down and, and pronounce them on us is, is the way it's going to be and there's no, no, no changing. There's, there's nothing we, oh, there's nothing we can do. Uh, this is the way it is. I think they're, they're feared. Uh, Monsanto is feared in the agricultural community. By one estimate, Monsanto now controls 90% of the total world acreage devoted to genetically engineered seeds. A lawsuit in West Texas is challenging Monsanto for alleged anti-competitive monopolistic practices. According to the complaint, Monsanto's ongoing ability to charge higher prices for Roundup is the result of a comprehensive anti-competitive scheme that Monsanto began implementing in the 1990s. The pricing issue extends to so-called technology fees or tech fees, which Monsanto eventually stopped listing on invoices for crop seeds. Nonetheless, the fees are still there and rising. When we first started planting herbicide resistant soybeans, the tech fee was five or five fifty an acre, five or fifty five or five fifty a bag. By backing out the cost of the physical commodity in it, the seed, uh, we know that now we're paying probably somewhere around twenty dollars for the same trait. It's the exact same trait, uh, no added value, um, no added services, but they've uh, quadrupled the price. Through mergers, acquisitions, and so-called strategic alliances with other big companies in the agribusiness, Monsanto appears determined to totally control American agriculture. Neil Harl, 
a lawyer and retired professor of agriculture and economics at Iowa State University, says the combination of seed ownership concentration and vertical integration of the agriculture business is putting American farm entrepreneurship in jeopardy. The traditional independent entrepreneur status that farmers have always had from the beginning of time in this country is, I think, in danger because of the slow encroachment of the integrator into the management prerogatives, calling the shots. And so the producer is a little more than a tractor driver, a little more than a surf, uh, responding to uh, signals from uh, on high. It's like the old company store. They just basically determine how much the farmers are going to get. When you control, and, and in this case it's through a strategic alliance, when you control the cost of the inputs and the, the, the price of the product, the farmers caught in between. And that's the way it was in the old company store.